ከዛ ግዜ ዘመን ጀምሮ ትልቅ ምርት ያሳዩበት ነው የህዝቡም ስሜት በጣም 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 የጋለ ነበር የሚወጡት ሙዚቃዎች ለትውልድ የሚተላለፉ ጥሩ ጥሩ ሙዚቃዎች ነበሩ የሙዚቃ የስሜቱ እንደሞ የህዝቡ ስሜት በጣም የዳበረና ፍላጎት የነበረው ዘመን ነበር ያ ዘመን በርግጥ ወርቃማው ዘመን ነው ብየን ማለት ነው ያ በእውነትም ያዝ ያዝ ያ ዘመን የኢትዮጵያ የዘመናዊ ሙዚቃ አብዮት የተካሄደበት አራት እና አምስት አመት ነው ማለት ይችላልና ከዛ በኋላ ነው ከዛ በኋላ የኢትዮጵያ ቀዳማዊ ኃይለ ሥላሴ ቲያትር ኦርኬስትራ እየነገሰ መጣ በዚያን ጊዜ የነበረው ሙዚቃ ሆነ ለዛው ግጥሙ መልክቱ ሰውን የሚያረካ ማይረሳ በጣም ጥሩ ዘመን አሳልፈ ነበር ልብሳችን ተመሳሳይ በመሆኑ ከቦዎች ጋራ አንድ አንድ ሰው አንድ አንድ ሆቴል እንሰራ ሄደን ዞር ስንል ሳባ አድርጎ ይድስቲ ቢራ አንጣ ምናምን ምን ነገር ያጋጥም ስለነበር ያምታወሰን ምራቱን ታሽና ወደኔ ክብሪ known as the Elvis Presley of Ethiopia Alamaya Shete holds fond memories of those times ብዙ memory አለ ብዙ ትዝታ ጥሩ ጥሩ ትዝታዎች ናቸው አሉ ያሳልፈነው ቆንጆ ዘመን የህዝቡ ድጋፍ የህዝቡ ፍቅር ህዝቡ የኮታኮታ የህዝብን ምክር እየተቀበል በመዋያችን እየዳበርነ በመሄዳችን ለዚህ በክታናል ብለን በመንለውም ደሞ በተለይም በዛን ዘመን የነበርነ አርቲስቶች እምን ጫወተው እምን ዘፍነው የህዝብን ኡነታ ነው እምን ሰራው ለሀገር ብቻ ነበር ማለት ይችላል ለጥቅ ማለት ነበር inspiration and music he says started from childhood tinish lijonye mission academy ust mar nebera holy bible bizu ketatel nebera mezaf kidus na mazmur zemre neber holy songs yano yeni background then walk to the mo yenebero ያ ወቅት የሮክ እና ሮል ኤጅ ስለነበረ እና ኤልቪስ ፕሪዝሊ በጣም ፖፑላር ሆኖ ወጥበት ሰዓት ነበርና ሲኒማ ቤት ሁሉ ስንሄድ ሁሉ ግዜ ዋች ምን አረጋው እነሱ እነሱ ነው እኔ እንግዲህ ዘፈን በሆሊ ሶንግስ በመዝፈን ተነድፍ ያለው ራሴን ትሬን ያረኩኝኝናለሁት in rock and roll samana intensil yetenedef kwedku yimba na elvis presley now hulu neger tiche wede muzika uskepa በጣም አርት ወድ ነበር አ what i remember is አርበኞች ትምርት ቤት ስማር ፔቸርድ ስኩል ድራማ ሁሉ ሰርቻለሁ ፕሪንስ ኦዲዮና ኢን ዘ አንኖን ኪንግ የሚል ድራማ ተሰርቶ በእንግሊዝኛ ነበር በጣም ኪዶ ሆነ ያን ሁሉ ሰራ ነበር ያጠናው ያ ሁሉ ለአርት ያለኝ ፍቅር ነበር ከዛ በኋላ ወደ ቦክስ አለም ገባኝ YMCA ውስጥ ቦክስ መጫወት ጀመርኩኝ በጣም ልዩ ፍቅር ነበር እንደሞ በዛ ፋይናሊ ግን ሙዚቃው አሽነፈና ወደ ሙዚቃ ዓለም ገባኝ That's all my you
He is known as The Voice and the king of Ethiopian pop. Talungun Gesesa is regarded as one of the most popular artists of Ethiopia. ነማርከኝ <laughs> But to know more who he was off stage, I sat down with his wife, Roman Bezu. When I met him in Washington, D.C., while I was still working with the International Monetary Fund in Washington, D.C., uh, that was the day when I saw the Lahun for the first time, like face to face. Otherwise, you know, he was a famous guy. We see him on the TV or in the newspaper, but I never had a chance to meet him like in person, you know, face to face. So uh, when he came to my apartment, there was an event, my, my sister's uh, not wedding. She wanted to introduce me, her, you know, her then, and now her husband at that time, uh, the, uh, her boyfriend rather. So uh, among my visitors, was, was the lawn was there. And nobody, I mean, told me that he was coming. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he was in town then. So here we opened my apartment's door. Among the visitors was the Lawan. And I, when I saw him, I said, kind of what? Oh, this is the Lawan one day. Was, oh, I said, fine, we we'll introduce each other, and that's it. That relationship led to friendship, marriage, and two children, a daughter and a son. But Talahun's career was still a central part more experience, more, uh, he lived more to his career rather than to his personal life, to be honest with you. Uh, he didn't have, as he's supposed to have, you know, a personal life. His personal life was kind of shaky because of his, he gave too much of himself to his career rather than to himself or his family, to be honest with you. So uh, we can, you can more judge him by the, the, you know, by his career, what he has achieved, what he has contributed. The inspiration behind his music, what was it? He lived for his career. All his entire, you know, life was to his career, nothing else. For that, uh, he had achieved a great deal of, you know, uh, success as well. Because nothing, you know, to, 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 to reach where he reached, 
it's not something that you can get it, you know, just like that. No, he spent like more than 50 years. It's not easy. You cannot even live alone, you know, stage performance. Any, any career, to live in one career throughout your life, it's not easy. And especially his career was a very tough career. It's a very, very tough profession. It will affect your personal life. It affects your, you know, in all aspects. It's a very challenging career. So, despite all the challenges he had, he managed to maintain that highest level of his career up to last time of his age, of his life. Diagnosed with diabetes in his later years, Talahun's health began to take a toll. Because of diabetes, he really suffered. And uh, he was diagnosed for diabetes for 40, 40 years, more than 40 years. And uh, the awareness of you know, diabetes was little at that time. And you know, he didn't really you know, take care of that properly. So he ended up having his right leg amputated. And the last stage of his life was, was really shaky and very emotional, it was very bad. So he was on a wheelchair. So for me, you know, to see the Ren Talahun, the guy, he was famous, the one who was performing on the stage, you know, he was, you know, radiant, he was, you know, everything on the stage. And when you see him on a wheelchair, even though I didn't want to show him, you know, my, my, my feelings, that was very, very tough for me to see Talahun on a wheelchair. But emotionally, uh, he was okay. He was kind of uh, strong, but he cannot be strong all the time. Uh, that really uh, made me suffer quite a bit. April 19th, 2009. Take us to that day. You know, death, this is something that we cannot avoid it. It's there, it's part of our life. But there are certain things that say, ah, this, are, uh, this thing has, uh, should have been done. This has, you know, I have to do this. No, we should have done this. All the time we have these things. But uh, that's a very bad memory. Uh, when we came here, he was okay. Everything went fine. You know, back in Washington, D.C., he had, you know, you name it, uh, six, seven doctors who were taking care of him. Uh, so when we came here, same night, I couldn't, we couldn't get any help, emergency help. Because, you know, when you die, when somebody dies without any help, and somebody who dies with all the support he needed, you see? You see that the comparison, at least? for uh, the family left behind. Oh, we have done all what we could done. But when there's no help, no support, in terms of emergency, I'm talking about the medical, emergency medical. When you mentioned there were no help, emergency help. Emergency help for the, to the hospitals. I've been through two, three different clinics for an emergency, there was no help. So he died without receiving any, any medical emergency. That was, I think it's uh, for this generation, I think we cannot see again the same kind of funeral. I can say that, and maybe other people might have the same idea as me. But, uh, and that's what he deserves, in a way, after all, the Lahun. He was deep rooted in everybody's hearts. What do you want the world to know about Talihun Gassasa? There is nothing new I can tell to the, to the, you know, to the Ethiopian people. 
they know more than I do, you know, those uh, Tlahun's fun when he started when he was at the age 40. So Tlahun is Tlahun, Tlahun Gassasa is Tlahun Gassasa. You just mention uh, the name even for a, a, a boy in the streets, he can tell you who Tlahun is. So there is nothing new I tell about Tlahun. He's in, he's in everybody's uh, soul and flesh, I can say. So Tlahun is Tlahun. <laughs> During the 80s, the nights were filled with music lovers, packed in nightclubs, to hear the new emerging sounds of Ethiopian music. That time, people used to enjoy the big band, like what we call the big band is the six-piece band. Like That was, I think it's uh, for this generation, I think we cannot see again the same kind of funeral. I can say that, and maybe other people might have the same idea as me. But, uh, and that's what he deserves, in a way, after all, the Lahun. He was deep rooted in everybody's hearts. What do you want the world to know about Talihun Gassasa? There is nothing new I can tell to the, to the, you know, to the Ethiopian people. They know more than I do, you know, those Tlahun's uh, fun when he started when he was at the age 40. So Tlahun uh, is Tlahun, Tlahun Gassasa is Tlahun Gassasa. You just mention uh, the name even for a, a, a boy in the streets, he can tell you who Tlahun is. So there is nothing new I tell about Tlahun. He's in, he's in everybody's uh, soul and flesh, I can say. So, the Lahun is the Lahun. <laughs> During the 80s, the nights were filled with music lovers, packed in nightclubs, to hear the new emerging sounds of Ethiopian music. That time, people used to enjoy the big band, like what we call the big band is the six-piece band, like I have the seven-piece bands. And um, to see everybody live singing, 
whoever is popular, whoever is singing the imitation songs like English and you name it, Arabic, whatever, Sudanese. <laughs> The 80s produced many great talents. Kuku Sasebi was one of them. As young as she could remember, she always had an interest in music. It was just a matter of time before her talents were known. It was on the day of my graduation. Uh, we were having a good time with my friends and everybody said Cuckoo has to sing, go, go and sing, go and sing. And I was so afraid to sing because I never performed in a, on a stage and with a, a band. I was so afraid to do that. But they pushed me and I sang to Zita. And everybody loved it and it was, that moment came that I want, always wanted to be a singer and that day I decided that I was going to become a singer. She went on to perform with many popular bands, such as the Roja Band. Later, a successful solo career. She still reflects on her humbling beginnings. I made my uh, first cassette, Fakra Barat it was a hit, and then I wake up Rare. There was another one which was very, very good too. So then I, I traveled. I started traveling. Uh, I went to Djibouti. I performed at Djibouti Sheraton and Yemen Sheraton and uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. It was very, very good. Uh, people loved us. They, it was such a Good, wonderful time. Those days are unforgettable. <laughs> Mekniatum, the Samanyaust, Nabazatanaust, Yasaroch, or Saroch, Kadabu, Zafan, Bamelawet, whether the Western style, the Western Asarar, more Safad Goba Magrav, Savu, Yedabun Musica, and Bisama Arigallo, Sumbazatanaust, Itasarano, Kazam, the Pitum Damum, Dalput, Amarinian, the Regi. More is some malay, some mum, the shet chalal, I shet and be a salal, it took as a musica, Macari chalal, but any, any generation, any time, like a year old chalal low, in chance by magnity, in chance lit a camo in milim, Sarah Chile at Korea, Buzu, time at Fichalo. So artists are chosen to music language, the fine chosen, or if they are the most famous, music language, the similar, no, but am. And the subject that they choose, they contribute a lot. The music, the upcoming, the artists are chosen, artists are chosen. Zimialu, but am goes goes music language, chalu producer chalu. Musikan ia syarikat itu, ia tak ajar nom. Ahun subit cara lembek ajar lembik ia nom. Kena tu musika agar acim bicara dekat saya ahun, agar acim buat lemas talk pada Afrika. Mau dah ada ramai pun. Today's Ethiopian music is more diverse than ever, even capturing international appeal.
One artist who shares their international spotlight is Sardinia Gabramakos. As a little girl, I was an invisible girl. What meaning invisible, like a shy girl. Uh, I don't that much interact with people. You know, those, those kids that can be bullied easily. I wasn't bullied that much, but I was, I was a little bit invisible. I was a very shy girl. And uh, I was very much into academic, into learning, into school. Uh, this music thing just came, uh, probably I think it was inside me, but I just don't want to take it out or maybe I just don't want to acknowledge it. Once the music came out of her, the world embraced her. In 2004, she was awarded the Cora Awards for Best Female Artist from East Africa. When the award ceremony started, it started from the female category and it started from East Africa. And then when they called my name, that's a, that was the, the first award. My name and there's a Kenyan. We share that, that award. Uh, best female artist from East Africa. There's Kenyan, Achiangabura, and me. And when they call my name, what? I have the privilege of presenting before you the best female artist for East Africa. Uh, Tetsina Gabramakas from Ethiopia. Uh, I didn't expect this. It's my first time to be nominated in the Cora, so I didn't think I would be. I would have this chance, and I would like to give thanks for our Lord for giving me this happiest moment of my life. And I would like to thank everybody who, who worked on my music video, everybody who supported me, my family, my friends, my fiancé, uh, groom, my friends, uh, everybody. This is not only mine, it's ours. <laughs> For me, it was a first experience to be Best Female Artist from, from East Africa and to accept this award. It was an unexpected experience. As Ethiopian music becomes more diverse, so does criticism of what's Ethiopian and what's not. Reggae artist Johnny Raga says, times have changed. My father used to move, used to dance and jump and down, up and down for the music he loved, you know? And that could be chik chika, you know? But like, what I do is I do the music that I really love to hear, you know, and to dance. And this, this feeling, all the people that I know, or my, like most of the people, most of the young people, they share this feeling, you know. So I said, like, yeah, I mean, we have to move with time. Over 52 years ago, some of the greatest music legends once walked this hall to perform here. Today, it is called Jazamba and plays host to some of the greatest acts in Addis Ababa. Taitu Hotel, the oldest hotel um, in Ethiopia, around 1898 was the date uh, was opened. So uh, that's the biggest thing about it, the history part of it. And the fact that it's found in the old part of Addis in Piazza also creates an interest for us. Uh, so and for me, that's the part that attracted us for us to come here and open the club here.
As the world grows around us, so does technology. In fact, you can download your favorite music or song on your mobile. But the major issue in Ethiopia is piracy, the illegal copying and selling of music. For the person who's selling the CD, it, it really pisses me off. There's nothing I can say. It really, really pisses me off. And one thing pisses me off, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, yeah, you can go to court, or you can call a, you can't call the police and say, he's doing this and this, and so. Maybe they're, they don't have, maybe they don't have the authority, or maybe they don't have enough information about it. It pisses me off that I cannot do anything about it. Now, now things are changing. It seems it's changing. We're fighting. Uh, there's a copyright office. Uh, they're putting people into court. They're trying to put people in prison. It's starting. This is a problem all over the world. It's not a problem only for in Ethiopia because it is an intangible asset. You can't see it. It's intellectual property is different from the other properties because we don't see it. We don't. Uh, touch it. It's an intellectual part. So, we do, uh, people don't usually recognize it as a as an as a property. And the policymakers and the enforcing agents, at the same time, don't realize that the intellectual property is a property. So, here is the part of the problem. Here lies the, pro the part of the problem of enforcing the rights. When there is an individual debating if they should buy the original CD or the copy, what would you say to that person? I would say they have to buy the original CD because it has m good quality. And if they love me, they have to show me that respect and love by buying the original CD of Coco Subsebe with my picture on it. This concludes our program. I'm Antoine Ninley, and from all of us from Insight, thanks for watching.